Baptism Sunday, everybody. It's known around this part to be one of the most exciting Sundays like of the year, no doubt. You excited to be here, see some life change, hear some stories, watch some baptism? Now, if you guys are really excited, you'd be up on the front row to get on the splash zone. But, but I see you've been here before, so you want to get back. It's cool. Uh, now, one of the things that I want to do is, is here in a minute, we're actually going to have some people come out, and they're going to introduce themselves and tell you why they want to be baptized. And, and that's an exciting moment for all of us, just to see family members and see what God's doing in them publicly, declaring that they're making a commitment to follow Jesus. But before we have them come out, what I want to do is just for a short time is tell us really a context of what baptism is. Like, what is this idea of baptism? And most importantly, where did it come from historically? Because it, it has roots inside of our scripture and inside of our Bible, and we want to discover that. What was the context back in the Old Testament about baptism? So that will actually help us put it in the context today, right? So if you know anything about the word inside of the original language, it's like a word called baptizo, and that, that's baptism. That really just simply means to immerse or to submerge. That doesn't mean sprinkle. It doesn't mean splash from a distance. It means submerge or immerse. Now, that's important because if this is what the original writers of the Bible, inspired by the Holy Spirit, were trying to tell us, baptism is an idea of submersion and immersion. Like, you, you have to get all in, fully engulfed. That's like you de- diving into the deep end and making sure that you come out fully immersed with water all around you. And so the idea historically, you know, your Bible's broken up to do big sections, one of the Old Testament and one of the, the New. So now what I want to do is actually just travel back in time and go back to the Old Testament to find out the context and the historical background for baptism. And so the idea way back in the day in the Old Testament that baptism was the, the same idea to immerse or submerge, but it was like a, um, well, it was like a washing It was like a a shower today, like a bath. And so by just seeing how you look, it looks like you've already baptized yourself by coming to church today. You look good, you know what I'm saying? You you, you clean up nice, as most people say. In the Old Testament, that's exactly what it was. It was people saying, man, I need to come and meet with Jesus. But I recognize there's like this big gap in between who I am and who he is. Come on, somebody. Man, I, w- I want to go meet with him, but if, if God is the writer and author of the Bible, this guy is way too holy for me just to flippantly come and to meet with. Come on, you catching this? And so the idea was I need to get showered up. You know what I mean? I need to cleanse myself. So the Old Testament was like, you don't, you don't just don't sprinkle yourself, you know, like a little bird bath, as some people say. Don't just wash your face and wash your hands. Completely submerge yourself. And back in the day, the, the, the Levites and the priests in the Old Testament would actually do that. They would wash themselves before their priestly duties and then after their priestly duties. I mean, come on, there, there's a lot of baptisms going on in the Old Testament. Just why? Just so the people could meet with God. Because they, they, they found this thing, God is holy, he's powerful, he's amazing. <laughs> I got no place. I've got no qualification meeting with that God. And so they said, man, I just need to take a bath to cleanse myself. And the Old Testament word was like to consecrate yourself. You need to separate yourself from all those bad, evil things, which the Bible also calls sin. Things like greed, lust, anger, hatred. The the, the ideas that God really subjects themselves as sin, which is a fancy word for saying anything that separates us from God. He is holy, pure, amazing, powerful, majestic, and we are not, right? And, and so in the middle, in this Old Testament idea, we would, we would just come to God and say, I want to hear from you. I got directions. Anybody here today need some directions? I just need to hear from you. Anybody just need some hope? Like, saying, man, I'm, I need to come to church, but I need some hope. But you got this barrier thinking, I got no right asking for a God full of hope because of my lifestyle, right? And that's where the Old Testament idea is, you just need to wash yourself. You need to take a shower before and after you go meet with this God. And so the idea was just that you would wash, you would consecrate yourself, you would, you would separate yourself so that you could actually go meet with a God. Because why? You want provision. You want blessing. God's given you promises, but you can't access them without getting cleaned up. All because of who God is. 
And then you keep reading, and the Old Testament comes to a conclusion, and then you keep fast forward, and then you get the another section of the Bible called the New Testament. Thank the Lord. Somebody say, thank God for the New Testament. You don't have to kill any animals. You don't have to take 17 showers before you go meet with God. Come on, somebody. You just got to be real. Like, this is amazing. Anybody kill any sheep before you come? Probably not. If you did, see me after this because that's a little bit weird. Anyway, so, so the idea that Jesus came to say, listen, we're going to do away with sacrifice. Why? Because the perfect atonement, the perfect lifestyle, the perfect qualification for anybody to actually meet with God has already been fulfilled in Jesus, and it's all done complete. Amen. That was a good shouting point, so you guys did good. <clears throat> and, then, and then the book goes on. Like, right when you open up the New Testament, the right, like, right when you open up the New Testament, you go from the Old Testament, you wash yourself on the outside so that you can go meet with God, to hear from him, to have his provision, to have all his blessings that he promised. Then you go from the New Testament, and you get this idea of baptism. Like, like just, it, it's just the introduction. It's what we fall right into. It's the book of Matthew. It's like the first major thing. Check it out. Matthew chapter 3 is what it starts off right from the get-go. Matthew chapter 3 says this, John the Baptist is up on the scene. I baptize you with water. I I immerse you. I dunk you in the water for repentance. But God, he, capital H, is coming after me. Let me tell you, he is mightier than I. Anybody, Anybody feel that way? God is mightier than I. Who gets reminded on a continual basis, God, you are mightier than I, whose sandals, I mean whose feet, whose shoes, I'm not even worthy to carry around or untie, but he is going to baptize you. He's going to immerse you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Can I get some of that? You know what I mean? Like it's not just about the water, it's about the Holy Spirit and the, and the fire because there's an idea that the New Testament shifts. Remember the Old Testament we just talked about is a ceremonial washing. It was the outside shower that you needed to clean up. The New Testament has this idea that it needs to be for repentance. What does that mean? It needs to be for a mental change and an action change. Stop doing the sins and trust that God's already done the work. Seek him to find out what pleases him. Change your lifestyle to give yours over to him. Instead of following your own ways, follow God's ways. And so when this comes, there's a, there's a particular shift in the New Testament to say you need a washing now, not of the outside, but of the inside. 1 John 1 says it like this. You need to be cleansed from all your sins. The only one that can do that is going to be Jesus, the only mediator, the only one in between you and God, the man himself, Jesus Christ. He is the one who cleanses us from all all of your sins. So now there's a baptism, there's an immersion, not of the outside, but of the inside. What is it of? So that we cannot be separated from God anymore, but we can actually be unified. This is a brilliant idea because God is saying, listen, man, this is, this is a good, this is a big concept that I really need you to grasp. There, there's not just this ceremonial washing. It's not just the sprinkling of water. It's not just the that every once in a while you just get washed up on the outside because I really don't care if your hands are washed. I care if your heart is clean. Come on, somebody. There's nobody that can clean your heart and your soul besides Jesus. And how many know some of the practices in the Old Testament like repeated baptism, immersion, need to be happening today? Repeated baptism, immersions of the soul like, because we are still going through this process, not of salvation, because salvation is that one moment where we just say, God, I give my life to you. I, I declare this. You cleanse me from my sins, from all the forgiveness, so there's no separation. My faith is in Jesus, the only son coming down from heaven. And so I am saved. I'm heading to heaven. But there's more. Come on, you, are you catching this? I could, I could be heading to heaven straight having my name in the Lamb's book of life, but still realize that there's more. And that's the idea of immersion. That's the idea today that we don't just want the outside cleansed, we want the insides. We, want, we need the inside of our soul cleansed, washed repeatedly. That's, that's another definition of baptism. It's to do so repeatedly. Repeatedly. 
Any, anybody see this idea of, of just being dunked in the water like two or three times? Like you baptize once and then we do it again twice and then you go three times. You're like, man, we just need a lot of washing, right? You ever taken a longer shower because you got really dirty? Maybe you're doing some gardening or outside it was muddy. Come on, somebody catching me. That's what we need to realize. It's not just coming inside of God's word, inside of his presence to, to clean and take the shower on the outside. I appreciate that, and so does your neighbor for taking a shower. But what God really is looking for is for you to recognize the true condition of the inside. Man, I am so dirty without you. I need you to repeatedly cleanse me. Not for salvation. Let me just, let me just caveat real quick. Not for salvation. Salvation is done once and for all, and it's a gift so that you can't boast from God. Come on, somebody catching this? Salvation is finished. What I'm talking about is the process that whenever Jesus comes into your life, cleanses you, but then has some more work to do. And this idea, can, can I just say it? Because I think it's true, unfortunately. Get ready. <clears throat> I think too often we come into the, the church and we want to be sprinkled with Jesus. We, we just kind of want to be, just, just get me in the splash zone and just sprinkle me some Jesus so that I can go about my day with his blessing. I really what I want is just him to sprinkle protection on me whenever I'm hard, in my hard times. Really what I'm looking for is, is just to be sprinkled with some Jesus whenever I have some tough decisions and I want him to speak to me. Really what I want is just to be sprinkled with some Jesus so that I can make sure that I'm going to heaven because I really, I guess the other option is hell and I don't want to go there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm being real because we just need to talk about this as a church. God's not in for being sprinkled. He's not in for you just to get a little bit of hand washing whenever it comes. The idea of baptism, can you go back to the original definition? The idea of baptism is full on immersion, to be submerged, not on the outside, but on the inside. Come on, somebody. And whenever this happens, there's an idea that we, that, that, our, that our minds, our minds need to be dipped, submerged into the word of God, right? It needs to be renewed. Our souls need to be immersed, dipped repeatedly in the presence of God. We need to be just filling our lives with worship so that that's the only thing around us. Let me, let me give you a parallel, if, if I can. Let's say that, that you were to be dropped in the middle of the ocean of God's grace. That's being immersed. Anybody, anybody feel comfortable at all swimming in the middle of the ocean with no island and no physical land in, in sight? Nobody in their right mind would feel comfortable. But that's the picture that God gives. I, I, I've got views that you can't imagine. But the only way you're going to see the world like any other world is you're going to have to go underwater and, and look. Come on, somebody catching this? You're going to have to dip your head and go underwater and look at the world that I've created. It's unlike any other. But you're going to have to be fully immersed in the things of me to walk this thing out internally so that you can view things you've never seen before. You can see colors and fish and coral reefs and distances and depths and caves like you've never seen before. You're immersed into the grace of God so that your mind can actually be renewed. Your soul actually be cleansed and purified daily, constantly, so that God can do his work. Now, now I know what you're thinking, but being, but being like thrown in the middle of the ocean is not safe. But I didn't say anything about being safe when it comes to following God. I said it's his will for us to follow him. That's the safest place to be inside God's will. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It's going to be amazing. But he's good. And he's amazing. And his grace is enough. So that whenever we are weak in the middle of the ocean, totally immersed, saturated by God's grace and his presence, we know these are dangerous waters and I'm in over my head but this is exactly what God's called me to do. So today, we're going to baptize people in water only as a symbol, as a parallel, not for an outside washing, but just for an internal symbol of what God has done to everyone who comes up internally. They've made the decision, a commitment to go all in with God, fully surrendered, to be submerged every single day in God's presence, in his word, and in his will, so that all they want to do here is tell you publicly that decision that they made privately. So if you're here today and you're thinking, I really want to make that decision. I, I, I maybe want to make the decision to follow Jesus or 
maybe just to be baptized like you've never done before. We have some people all the way over here uh, to my left, your right, that are going to be in this room that would love to, to sit down and have that conversation with you. And don't let anything stand in the way of you being baptized today because we got everything you need. All you, maybe God's asking for, is a willing and open heart. So you ready to, to see some people be baptized today?